Welcome back to the channel. I am Gringo and I have been traveling around South America for the past three months and I'm still gonna go through all of Central America using just this carry-on bag and that has been a complete game changer. So let's open it up and I'll show you what's inside. This has been my first trip with only carry-on luggage, so I thought it'd be cool to tell you a little about how that experience has been. I'm also gonna put all of the links of the products that I use in the description down below. And if you use any of those links, you will also be supporting the channel. And let me remind you that this video is not sponsored and I genuinely use all of these products. First, let me say that before embarking on this journey through South and Central America, that will probably take me at least a year, I bought a brand new 70 liter bag. You see that bag here in the company of Nikki from Nikki Post Travel Stuff. Well, it didn't take me long to realize that with all the flying I've been doing and considering the money I'm currently making teaching English, which is just about $800 a month, paying for checked baggage was just not sustainable anymore. Big no-no. So when I was in Peru, which was the first stop on this Gringo Nation world tour, I went in search of a bag that could be used as carry-on. I ended up finding this 39 liter bag. It's made by Caterpillar and I instantly fell in love with how sturdy it seemed, which is going to be necessary for this very long trip. I think this baby will be lasting me a good while. Coincidentally, Nikki's luggage was not doing so hot, so when she was going back to Argentina, I gave her my 70 liter bag, and I guess if I ever want it back, I'm just gonna have to get myself to Buenos Aires. I can think of worse problems. But now, the freedom I have traveling with just this carry-on bag is the best feeling in the world. I'll talk about that more in a second, but first I wanna give you some packing tips to put you in the correct mindset for when you're gonna pack for your journey. The first one, which is very important, is don't pack for however long your trip is. Just pack for around 10 days. For example, if you're going on a one month trip, you definitely do not need to be taking 30 pairs of underwear. Just take enough to last you until the next time you wash your clothes. And that goes for all types of clothing. So just take a comfortable amount of clothes that will last you around 10 days, wear, wash, and repeat never fails. It's also important to remember that no matter how bored you may get of your own clothes, if you're going to be going to a different city every couple of weeks, the people you meet along the way are seeing your clothes for the first time. So they're always going to be a novelty somewhere. Tip number three, pack clothes that are easy to match. I actually tend to use a lot of black, so that matches with a lot of things. And as for my t-shirts, they're all pretty much solid colors with not a lot of writing on them, which makes them easy to match as well. Essentially, most of your items should match each other, and you should also strive to have items of clothes that cover multiple occasions. For example, these babies can be used on an afternoon run, but they also work very well for a night out. Now that I've got you in the right mindset for packing, let me show you what's in my bag. And let me remind you that I have needed to cover all sorts of climates on this trip. I was wearing multiple layers of clothes and even gloves on my hike to Machu Picchu. And in a week or so, I'm gonna be sipping on margaritas on the Colombian coast. The main takeaway from that is sometimes you just need to leave things behind. Now, if it's an item you really care about, you can always mail it back home to your family which is something I've done before and might do in the future during this trip. If you can live without it, just leave it behind and it may even be useful to someone else. Without further ado, for this voyage around the world, I have packed six t-shirts, two tank tops, two long sleeve shirts, three long sleeve dress shirts, three sweaters. So I currently have three pairs of pants. One of them is sweatpants, which are used pretty much every single day. I also have these pair of slacks that I will need to replace very soon because I ripped them on the butt. And I just have one pair of black jeans that I use on pretty much every occasion when I need to leave the house. One pair of swimmers has proven to be more than enough. Four pairs of shorts. So two of these are actually more for staying at home and two of them are more for going out. As I mentioned before, these guys I can use on a run, but I can also use them on a night out, pack versatile items. 
I have packed 10 pairs of underwear and one of them are actually long johns. Um, I don't think I'll be needing those much more in the future, so I might leave them behind at any given moment, leaving me with nine pairs of underwear. Underwear is definitely something I like to have a little more of because it can last me like 10 days until my next wash. I think I have quite an excessive uh, number of socks. I have 10 pairs of socks. I could easily do with like seven or eight or even less, but I guess I just like to have funky sock options. And lastly, one heavy duty rain jacket is extremely important uh, because you just never know what the world's gonna throw at you. I currently have two pairs of very old shoes. I should probably get new ones very soon. So these new balances are more for like walking greater distances or even going for a run and the slip on vans for a more comfortable vibe. And of course, don't forget your flip flops for beach time. Apart from all of my clothes, I also travel with some clothing accessories, of course. So the first one, very important, is a belt. This is the only belt I have. I wear it with my black jeans every time I go out. And then I have some beanies. This one's more of a fashion statement, I suppose. And I got one in Peru. Shout out to Nick and Maria for getting me this one here. And I have another beanie that is a little warmer. I don't suppose you need three beanies while traveling. One is probably enough, but I do tend to wear these a lot, so I have three. I've also got my Albania cap. This is the only cap I have. I will probably get a new one soon. And I have two bandanas, one black and one red. You can wear these around your neck or also on the forehead when going hiking or something. This is just something to wipe the sweat off when I'm working out so hard at the gym. This is a cooling towel that I take on my hikes. You can wet this and just wear it around your neck and it keeps you nice and cool. So those are the clothing accessories that I travel with. Now we're gonna go through my bathroom bag with only the quintessentials, of course. So I carry around like a handful of Q-tips, no need to be taking the whole box. And I used to have more band-aids than this, but hey, things happen on the road. So I'm left with those. Of course, a bar of soap and some hair wax for when I used to have hair. This one is quite important. I keep shampoo in here. It's nice having a little container because if you buy a big bottle of shampoo, you can just kind of put half in there and leave the rest behind. And a fun fact, this used to be a soy sauce container from Georgia, still with me to this day. We have here some dental floss, some paracetamol for all the pain. I carry around this teeth guard that I should really be using more, but I haven't used it in a while. Don't tell my dentist. I have a razor for shaving, two toothbrushes. I have some muscle relaxants. Uh, I guess these are more for emergencies. I haven't used them ever since I started this trip. In Peru, I had some pretty bad diarrhea, so I am holding on to these diarrhea pills. And I also got a bit of a fever, so I bought a thermometer. I've had some ear infections in the past year, so I carry around some medicine for that, some mosquito repellent, nail trimmers, and I carry around these little Vietnamese creams. I got them in Georgia. They're kind of like Vicks Vapor Up, so you can like rub them on your neck or your back if you're having some sort of pain. Here on the other side, I have some cologne, which is running out, some sun cream, of course, some toothpaste, it's quite important to get like these small deodorants because it just leaves you with much more space. Some extra cologne. This is Bepenthal cream that just covers a lot of like skin stuff. And if you get a tattoo, you wanna rub this on. And I occasionally get tattoos on the road, so good to have these. Those are all my bathroom things. I can just fit them nicely into this little bathroom bag. You may have noticed I travel without a towel. Honestly, over the years, I've considered them to be a little useless. Everywhere you stay has a towel. If you stay at a hotel, there's towels. If you stay at an Airbnb, they provide you with towels. Although a lot of hostels don't provide you with free towels, you can definitely rent one at every single hostel for like a dollar. If you feel like you absolutely need to travel with a towel, just make sure you get yourself one of those quick drying ones. As far as electronics go, I travel with a laptop, of course. It is completely essential. I use it for teaching English and for editing these here YouTube videos. I also carry around an old Kindle for reading. And the iPad is also really good for watching things on the plane or any other sort of transport. And I have some equipment that I need to film the YouTube videos as well. This is a DJI gimbal that I use occasionally. 
Of course, my phone that doubles as a camera when I'm making these videos. And I also have this mic that I'm using right now. Now, this is one of my prized possessions and it's probably the item I use the most while traveling. Get yourself a nice universal adapter that will work in every single country you go to because trust me, it's happened to me before and you do not want to get. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I have been caught without one and I definitely don't suggest it. There's nothing worse than arriving at an Airbnb in a new country and you can't even charge your laptop or your phone. I also travel with this bag. It's full of plugs, wires and adapters that I may need at any given moment. Honestly, I haven't been using them much lately, but it's just nice to have this to rely on. Admittedly, I used to keep all of this stuff in a little plastic bag, and trust me, that is a complete disaster. All the wires get caught up together. So I definitely suggest getting yourself one of these bags to house all your electronic needs. Now, this is a little segment I like to call Random Crap Explained, where I show you all this random crap and explain it. I have these glasses that I got in Georgia. They are only for the computer, but because I spend a lot of time on the computer, it's a good idea to have them around. My headphones, of course, which I use every single day. They are Bluetooth headphones. I also carry around a mouse pad and a mouse because who wants to be using a trackpad all day? This little guy is the back pod, and it may not be the smallest piece of equipment, but it's absolutely necessary to me because sometimes I get back pains, and if you lay down on this little fella, he will help you out greatly. So the back pod goes with me wherever I go. On the same subject of pains, I carry around a tennis ball because you can actually put this in a pillowcase. You throw it behind your shoulder and you can actually like rub. <laughs> <laughs> throw the pillowcase over your shoulder and you just lean on the ball and it kind of massages your back and I have another massage ball that I like to use as well I have here a compact jump rope for those days that you just don't leave the house but you feel like you still need to do some cardio this is quite compact easy to travel with I have a little luggage scale so you can weigh your luggage and then you know if it's over 23 kilos or not for your flight I don't have that problem anymore because I just use carry-ons and they're always going to be just about 10 kilos some headphones I also have a portable charger for when my battery goes out and I'm taking photos and videos this is very important a wine opener because let me tell you a lot of airbnbs do not have wine openers and i myself do not want to be caught without one and i also have a little electronic watch that i use for running so that is all the random crap i carry around with me from country to country now that you've seen everything that goes into my bag i quickly want to mention that i tend to roll my clothes when i'm packing and that takes up much less space so give it a go why not I cannot begin to explain how much liberty I have traveling the world with just this 39 liter carry-on backpack and another regular backpack. This one goes in the overhead compartment and this one under the seat in front of you. When you arrive at your final destination, there's no need to wait at baggage claim. You just stroll right on through to the exit with your two beautiful backpacks. And of course, there are financial advantages of just traveling with carry-on luggage. And that has been very important to me as of late because I've been saving on average $50 on most trips. If you want to go through my packing list, I've left a copy down below in the description. And if you have any further travel questions, we can actually set up a one-on-one -on -one call and I will answer any question you may have. So there's more information about that in this video here. Just click on that video and I'll see you over there in three, two, one.